Postgres wasn't really designed with this kind of Jamstack serverless architecture in mind, where you have lots of short running functions making a single database request and then shutting down. There's a little bit of overhead involved in establishing a Postgres connection, which isn't a problem if you do it once when you boot your server and then use it for all your database requests, but it's quite inefficient if you're responding to hundreds or maybe thousands of serverless functions that only exist for a few hundred milliseconds. Now, if you're using Superbase.js or Postgres directly, then this problem is already solved for you. But for anyone connecting directly to the database with something like Prisma, or for folks using Postgres outside the Superbase stack, I'm going to show you why you absolutely need to be using our new connection pooler called Supervisor. Let's get into it. So here I have an Elixir Live book. This is similar to Jupyter Notebooks if you're coming from the Python world, but it's basically just a way to run Elixir code step by step. So we're going to install some libraries and start our connection pooling process, and then configure our connection to our Superbase host with our username containing our Superbase project's ID. Then we want to create 500 of these connections. So this is emulating 500 different clients requesting data from Postgres. So each of these could be a separate serverless function, which spins up, requests the data from the database, and then shuts back down once it has a response. The problem is the database doesn't have 500 connections available to respond to all of these clients. So a connection pooler can be used to sit in between those requests coming from the client and the Postgres database. It establishes some connections to the database and then evenly distributes those client requests across the available connections. This means there's no connection overhead for the serverless functions. The database connection has already been made between the connection pooler and Postgres. And when the serverless function is finished and shuts down, that connection can immediately be used by another request. So that's exactly what we're emulating here with our Elixir code. So for each of our 500 connections, we're going to start a new process to request that data from the database, and we can run that query for one random client and get a response from the database showing that single row we requested. We can confirm how many active connections we have from supervisor to our database by counting the rows in the PG stat activity table where the application name is supervisor. So there are 15 connections that we can distribute our 500 requests across. So let's trigger all 500 requests to the database and we can see we got a successful response for every single one because Supervisor is awesome. Now to get the Supervisor connection string for your Superbase project, head over to the dashboard and then under settings and database, scroll down to the connection pools configuration section and grab your connection string. If this is connecting to pooler.superbase.com, then it's using Supervisor. Otherwise, click the link to the blog in the description to learn how to enable it. If you wanna go deeper on the technical side, or if you need some graphs with lines like this, rather than like this to make up your mind, then check out the blog linked in the description. Let Supervisor be the brain behind your traffic and reduce the amount of time your users are stuck at a red light. Now, another good application for that big Superbase brain is writing SQL. So check out this video right here to learn about using Superbase AI as your own personal DBA, generating SQL snippets based on the structure of your Superbase project. But until next time, keep building cool stuff.